Hello and welcome to the Gordo guys. We're here to review today about SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Good Bottom Rehydrated. <laughs> A few moments later. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Oh, man. One eternity later. Hello and welcome back to the Gordo guys. Paddy and James here and we're here to talk about Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated on the Nintendo Switch. Shall we jump straight into it? Yeah, let's go. Ah! Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated originally released on GameCube, PlayStation 2 and original Xbox back in 2003. This remake brings this classic back from the past with a new fresh coat of paint on the current gen platforms. This game actually comes out Tuesday the 23rd on PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One and for PC as well. Luckily though, thanks to Shop2.net once again, we managed to get this game three days early. So what do you think of the story so far Paddy? From the amount I've played up to now, it's a pretty simple story. Plan to create robots to take over the world and take the Krabby Patty secret formula, but doesn't program him to obey him. And also, it's a bit like a Spyro game, so if anyone's into that sort of style of game, I'd highly recommend getting this. It does get the job done, 100%. Yeah, generally this type of category of game, they're never really massive on story. I don't know about you, but I think the story feels just like an episode of Spongebob. Oh, so for example, plants and a secret formula, Spongebob and Mr. Krabs stops him, that type of story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As I stated before, this type of game is like Spyro, or ukulele, or Banjo and Kazooie, for example. It's a collector font. Oh yeah, I found this for you. I don't know what it is, but it looks important. The main collectible in this game is the golden spatulas. They help you progress through the game and unlock new levels. You also have little side collectibles as well, such as Patrick's socks and SpongeBob's golden underpants. They're to add a bit more replayability to it, and it really spices up the game. So, how are the graphics? Well, I think to be honest, they're pretty decent. They're a massive improvement over the original game. For me though, I'd rather have a more cartoony type of style than CGI. More like the TV show? Yeah, like the TV show. I think even though the cutscenes are in CGI and, and the visuals aren't cartoony like the TV show, the developers have really nailed the movement and the characters do still look very, very similar. Ah, right, I understand what you mean. For example, when Spongebob jumps in the air, his arms float in the air and stuff. Or when Patrick slams down on the floor, he has to peel himself back up. Yeah, I can see what you mean about the movement. I think what they've done with the Nintendo Switch version as well, from looking at comparisons with the other consoles, the graphics look really, really good in comparison. And the load screens, even though they are quite long, I wouldn't say they're Crash Team Racing or Witcher 3 on Switch long. So James, how do you think the game runs on the Switch? Well, the game is meant to be running at 60 frames per second, and it does do that on other consoles. Looking at a few videos though, I have seen that the frame rate is uncapped and so it doesn't always hit the 60 FPS, it's around about 45 to 55. I've never really noticed that, the game looks completely fine to me. Yeah, overall, you can't really see the difference between 45 to 60. Us personally, we, we thought it was absolutely fine and the compromises they made compared to what it looks like on the PlayStation 4 and the PC the compromises they've made to put it on the handheld, I think were worthwhile. There was one experience when playing the game when there was a lot going on on the screen. There was a slight lag, but apart from that, nothing really to write home about. Then will you vaporize me? I might spare your life so I can force you to work in my sweatshop making low quality design and knock off wallets. Okay, I'm gonna talk about controls now. I feel like this game controls really well. And I feel like the control scheme has a lot of influence from like Crash Bandicoot for example. Like his body slam when Spongebob slams down is similar to how Crash does it. And when he also attacks with the jellyfish in it, it's like Crash Bandicoot's spin attack. Overall though, the control scheme is very very simple and I feel like the game explains how the controls work really really well. Yeah, in a platformer, the controls can really make or break a game. And luckily for this game, the controls we think are superb. So first impressions of the game, I think it's a great game for fans of Spongebob. Now when this game was announced it received so much fan support and never playing the original game I couldn't see why. After a few hours of playing the game though 
I can fully understand why fans absolutely loved this game, and I think it definitely did deserve a remaster. Most licensed games, especially in recent years, are absolutely dreadful. But Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom really does the franchise justice. It feels like a really good addition to the series. Like we've said before, it feels just like another episode of the TV show. On the other hand though, in my opinion, I feel like they should have got all the original voice actors in. They had Spongebob, Patrick, but characters such as Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man weren't the original voice actors, so I would have preferred them to come back. When I first heard Mr. Krabs in the game, it felt like an imposter, it didn't sound like the original Mr. Krabs to me. So it sort of took the immersion out of the game for me. But other than that, I feel like the game's writing is phenomenal. And for a budget release title, it really does give other platformers a real run for their money. We only paid £22 for this game off Shop2.net and you can download it on Tuesday the 23rd for £24.99 on the Nintendo eShop. And for that price, it's a really well remastered game. And with tons of hidden collectibles, the game has a lot of replay value. For a game that was released in 2003, I am so glad it's been ported to current gen systems. It's brought new life to the game and it's given people like me and Paddy a chance to play it. With top HD visuals, it brings this game up to standards of other platformers that came out in much recent years. So Paddy, as a fan of Spongebob, would you recommend this game? Yeah, I would. I'd even recommend it to people who haven't even seen Spongebob or anything. Because it's got that sort of style of platformer that people like. Such as I've said throughout this video, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, Banjo and Kazooie. It's got that sort of play style, so I think people would really, really, really enjoy it. And for the money that is costing them, it's basically next to nothing really. And it's a good few hours, well not a few, maybe over 20 hour gameplay. So definitely worth the money. Another feature the game has, which we haven't yet spoken about, is its horde mode, which is local co-op and it also has online capability too. Now this isn't something either of us have tried yet, but we are hoping to get a video out of it this week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hopefully you'll be able to see that video pretty soon. On that note guys, I hope you enjoyed it. We really enjoyed making it. We'll have it. We had a bit of a blooper at the start of me failing, so we had a laugh making this. <laughs> and if you did like the video, please like and consider subscribing and hitting the bell. It really helps us out and it, even leave a comment actually. Just let us know what you thought of this video and what we could do better. Or even comment anything that you might disagree with us with. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. See you later guys. Bye. <laughs> I was in an undesirable position yesterday, and now my neck hurts.